Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Serie A review for this penultimate weekend in October. Yes, penultimate weekend in October on a day where so many big games were happening everywhere. Italy actually had two huge games happening and as the luck would have wanted it, uh, they were both scheduled in such a way that I actually found always another one to focus a little bit more on still. Uh, at least the Derby della Sole, I got a whole lot of fun out of it. I'm wearing Verona because despite everything else happening, especially with Milan, where we'll talk in just a second about it, um, Verona have statistically made the biggest jump in the table by disposing Lazio. So I think first time in the season I'm wearing Verona, fully deserved. They are definitely on the way up, had a horrible start, start to the season, but turns things uh, around for sure. Uh, as for the other thing, as I said, Milan, I honestly have to say, uh, I probably couldn't have dreamt up a more perfect weekend for Milan. You get the win in a very, uh, you know, hard fought way, although it should have been easy. So maybe that was a little bit of a negative, but at least you get the win. And then everyone around you is not winning. How better could that be? B, uh, and while you're not top of the table, it still looks good. However, I'm a little bit worried about the schedule coming up, not midweek, but then later on, there will be a few tough games where I actually have a feeling, yeah, Milan might lose for the first time in the league. I would say we run through the games, didn't see anything of the Friday, Friday games. I actually caught a little bit of Sassuolo Venezia. This was kind of in this uh, late afternoon slot where I, you know, Sunday, let's face it, I did not watch, uh, Saturday, I did not watch all that much, but I had a little bit time to watch that one, um, where Venezia actually took the lead through Oberegge, it was actually a very interestingly played attack, uh, where Oberegge, he just wanted that, that goal, he could have passed it as well, but at the point you thought, yeah, the game might be tipping towards Venezia, then Berardi said, nope, uh, took a shot. It went in and then in the second half, um, uh, Ongol by Henry and Fratesi turned the game around for Sassuolo. And then we already Bologna Milan. I mean, that must, despite all the madness that was happening on Sunday with the big games, I think this was the craziest game of them all. And it was a game that I think if Bologna would have stayed in full strength, this would have been a anything but... A straightforward affair for Milan. Uh, they really had to battle hard inside already in the early exchanges where um, I thought Bologna did quite well to contain Milan in many, 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 many ways. However, Ibrahimovic, who honestly, the stats show great for him, but I think he was, he was not... He did not have a good game overall, but he hit Leao, who takes a shot from a very uh, weird angle and suddenly the ball is in, in the net and I needed three replays until I saw, yeah, this took the deflection off of Medel because if that's not deflected, Skorups is, is getting to it. That I mean, there's no way that this ball goes past him unless he roofs it some, 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 something, but the way it went, yeah, very early lead. And, you know, I always remember Milan winning easy in Bologna just for a few times. I also remember Milan sometimes wearing red pants with their white shirts. Because uh, Bologna had white uh, pants, which I kind of miss these days. Because I thought this was a really, really interesting uh, look. Things got even better for Milan. Four, 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 four minutes later, I think it was uh, Castillejo is through. And Suamore pulls, pulls back. Was it Castillejo or was it... Uh, I actually don't, don't remember. In any way, pulled back. It is a clear red card. Last man. Uh, and so Milan, yeah, one man up, one goal up. You think, yeah, cruising and in Calabria, uh, an attack where probably they should have made the goal sooner, but he just uh, wank, wax it into the net. And it's 2 0 Milan. And I'm saying at the halftime, it's exactly the evening I was hoping for. Uh, Milan getting an easy win, no nerves needed. I'm all calm. Boy, was I wrong. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> I mean, the performance by Milan was really not that, that great. And, you know, uh, even Tonali came off, Castillo came off for Salamakers, Sal Sal and Polonia really tried. With uh, 10 men, they dug in, they fought, they pressed Milan high. Milan had some trouble. Uh, corner came for ninth and an own goal by Ibra. 
Okay, okay, we can deal with that. Nothing happened really. Then Soriano plays a wonderful pass into Musabero, and I don't know why no one is care catching him. Tato Roshano could have maybe gone a little bit more emphatically out and meet him, uh, but I don't want to hang this on him. I just think um, any of the, you know, if it was Menio or Donnarumma, I think they may have looked better, but I think uh, Barro did this quite well. And it's 2 2. They scored two goals within three minutes uh, with one man less. Oh boy, this is not gonna be an easy game. It got even better. Soriano with stops on steps on the leg. Uh, kind of ugly because you see the leg bending of Palo Touré. And while initially I would not have given uh, even a yellow card. When I see the replay, yeah, it is by all definition a red card. And, you know, uh, Balotelli, I think he didn't come a cow, a cow, a cow, but there was a real sense this could get ugly. And the weight stepping as a red card, I don't want to fault Soriano for it at all because he did not intend to do it. And I, I'm having more and more of a trouble if there was no real intent. I mean, yes, he wants to get the ball. You can see all the action is going, going for the ball and it just comes a little bit late. Uh, this is not something preventable for me. I have I'm getting some trouble with red cards like it, but by the light of law it was a clear red card. So Milan, two players up. However, that shock you bring it on Giroud because you want to have now the two big and the main baby the tactic was uh crosses, crosses, crosses and one of the big guys get it, although Slatan, to his credit, who had a, a terrible game up until the point. He had already assist, but he then actually fell a little bit back and was it was more in this number ten role. And left Giroud by himself up front, which I thought, yeah, maybe uh, as older as he gets, maybe Slatan should get him in a deep lying role. Similar, like, I mean, Mateos was never a front striker, but when Mateos started like as a uh, number eight, then he became the number 10 for German, for, for German then he went uh, back into defense and was still world, world class at the age of 40. For 10 minutes, Bologna did not concede a shot. Uh, Milan then piled on the pressure, but there were still then two counter attacks where Bologna could have scored. And I was standing there in the eighth, in the, in the eighth minute, and I even said it to my wife, I really would like Milan to win, but I have to give her a whole lot of credit. That job that Bologna is putting in there, they probably would deserve a draw. And then Anatovic came off, who actually also did a pretty good job. And I think. I think that kind of was then with Santander there was then a little bit this missing link because Anato which really really worked hard as, as, as well and then you know after such a high pressure situation where I think it was only a Giroud header that was really that, that, that dangerous the rest was all rather straightforward. Benacea ball falls him and he nicely volleys it out of the air into the net and I was celebrating yes I just said that I think Bologna would deserve a draw but of course Milan winning. And then Ibra, after another Benazir assist in the 90th, gets his goal. Uh, that's all my here, because we are, always, we are always on Ibra watch, because, you know, since he is with Milan, I mean, I always liked Ibra in a way. And he said, the guy, she, she said that, yeah, so he basically neutralized his con match contribution. I basically jokingly said, yeah, he might as well not have started, because, I mean, his net con contribution is a total zero. And, yeah, there's some truth to it. But hey, four to win. Cannot complain more. Uh, another remarkable result. Hellas Verona 4-1 against Lazio with all goals coming from Simeone. Yeah, the boy of Cholo. Uh, Immobile only pulling it one back to 2-2-1. Two, 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 but four goals, that's pretty amazing. And that's a pretty big win. And Sarri is already under quite some trouble. Derby del Sole, as I said, was in parallel to... United Liverpool and while it was a whatever I saw it was a highly entertaining match it went up and down it had chances it had both coaches sent off <laughs> that is also so both uh, Mourinho and Spalletti uh, in in the end got, uh, got sent off and Mourinho uh, rather stu stupidly because he was already on a yellow but now uh, in any case, I think it went up and down. It had its chances. Um, Tammy Abraham, I think, needs to make a make, make, make goal. I thought that Roma outfought Napoli, but Napoli, especially in the first half, was the slightly better team. Uh, and then you think Ozeman had got the win, and then he's a fraction of side. Napoli, unbeaten no more. Uh, perfect no more. They're still unbeaten, as is Milan, but now their level of Milan, however, goal difference speaks for Napoli. And then, what can I tell you about the Derby d'Italia? Not much, honestly, because uh, I watched PSG uh, playing in Marseille. 
uh, to, to an absolute raucous crowd. Uh, yes, it was only it was more goals there, but I think Inter they took the lead through Jacko. I think uh, Jalacha Nogle shot got deflected off the woodwork onto Jacko and then in something like that. And then Inter just tried to uh, administrate the result. Uh, it didn't necessarily go for the jug uh, the juggler. I, I remember every time I looked at it in the second half, it was more uh, over to, to the game. It was more that Juve was trying to get some, something, but not having really the means to do it until they get a penalty. Uh, that then Dybala converts in the 89th minute very late on. I thought, I mean, I needed to look a little bit yeah, uh, I hear it was a penalty. It was for me not immediately clear, but you know, I didn't have any commentary as well because, as I said, commentary was on the uh, OM PSG game. But while well, I here, it was probably, probably a good penalty, and Zaga didn't so got sent off. And yeah, that ends the match day in Italy. The review, the big derby in Italy, also ends in a, in a, in a draw. And Milan are now joined leaders with Na Napoli goal difference at the moment. Still speaks for Napoli, but it doesn't uh, tell, you know, at, in in the end it will be head to head. Um, just as we have a midweek round where Milan again will play Torino um, on Tuesday. I think they're not really, it's all, should be all rather straightforward affairs. Maybe Lazio Fior, Fiorentina could be an interesting one on Wednesday evening as well. And Napoli play Bologna. And Bologna is a tough out, but they have two players missing for red cards. And I think there's a little bit more about this Mihailovic guy. Bologna is a tough cookie. So yeah, that's all I can say for now. Uh, let me know if you want to add anything to the Serie A weekend. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.